On today's episode of Euro Truck Simulator 2, join me as we jump behind the wheel of this Scania R580 and take a peek at a custom aerodynamic trailer mod. Let's go ahead, roll that intro, and get right into it. Alright haulers, hello and welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator 2. So, as you can see here, we're actually in the outside camera, we're actually sitting at a Scania, uh, I guess this would be both a dealership and a service depot. And the reason we're here is because I happen to be driving a Scania R580. Uh, this is, I believe, the stock truck in the game, uh, I don't have any mods for it. Outside of the headlights, which I want to show you this really quick, the headlights are really, really sick if you ask me. So, you'll notice there's a nice glow on the bottom, it's got like the, uh, it's not a, I don't know if it's technically a halo, because I think technically a halo has to go around the whole outside, but it's got the, the running lights on the bottom. But there's something cool about the turn signals. They're sequential. I love this. <laughs> I love this so much. I don't know what it is, but I've always had a thing for sequential turn signals. Uh, there's a certain Mustang variant that has them. Uh, there's certain cars that I see. I don't know what it is. I just, I really like them. Maybe it's the fact that I've been involved in stuff in the fire service and that's pretty common on most emergency vehicles here at least uh in the u.s where they'll have sequential turn signals i think that's starting to get phased out because and i hate to say this i think they found them to be less effective like people still got confused which sucks because i think they look so cool like look at this and the cool thing about this mod is it's got them in the front and the back too which is really really cool but you'll notice something really really special back here attached to this truck so i want to take a peek at this real quick now this is a custom aerodynamic trailer mod that uh, I don't uh, remember who it's by, so do forgive me. But I do have everything linked in the description. I have put together a new mod collection that anytime I use a mod for this game in Steam, I, I try to only ever use Steam Workshop mods. It's so that I can add it to a collection, which you can find the link for down in the description below. All you have to do is go through there and add the mods to your game and you can play them. Obviously each mod sometimes has individual rules that you have to follow, like uh, what can go above each other or stuff like that. But any mods that I use, you will now be able to get access to in my description. So do definitely go check that out. But this is a beautiful trailer and this is put together by somebody uh, that took the Mercedes-Benz design. So this is actually a Mercedes-Benz trailer from I believe 2011, it's a concept trailer because I think technically it's illegal because I think the back of the trailer, that little arrow piece on the back right here, is technically illegal. I don't know if they've ever changed legislation to allow it, but I believe at the time it was. I have done a little research on this trailer, so uh, that's where that's coming from. But yeah, we've actually outfitted it for the Scania truck. Uh, obviously, you can see we've done like the white border lines on the side of the trailer, stuff like that. I don't know what it is about it, but I just, I really, really do like it. Uh, the paint job am iffy about. Uh, there's certain parts of it that doesn't fit necessarily. I would like to change it. Uh, but I've really thought uh, between the sequential turn signals and stuff, like I really like the futuristic design of certain vehicles. So I decided that's what we were going to roll with today. So let me quickly show you how the trailer has it set up for everything. So on the rear, a couple of things that I want to point out to you are the turn signals. So if I put on my four ways again, you'll see that the whole side of the trailer actually lights up on both sides. I have put custom lights on the bottom. Those are a part of the mod, but I've actually put them out. Uh, in real life, I believe there was just two red triangles. That's all it was. And then that red border is also a light as well. So if I turn my lights off, you'll see that turns off as well. But yeah, we'll throw our brakes on. And then obviously I will put it in reverse and you can see what that looks like. So overall, really, really cool truck and trailer. But what we're going to do now is go ahead, hop in the cab and take it for a spin. All right, and now we are in the cab. Let's go ahead and start her up. Now, the one thing is we are sitting here. We're not gonna be hauling any cargo. This is just gonna be a drive for the fun of it. Obviously this trailer, I believe you can. This is an ownable trailer, which is why I have it on. We're gonna go ahead and get rolling here actually while I'm sitting. So we'll go ahead and do that. And like I said, this is the stock truck. The only thing on it is a couple of visual modifications. What kind of sucks is we can't actually see the turn signals in here, but that's okay. Getting out of here is going to be kind of fun. Oh, 
but we'll get out here on the road. But yeah, overall, I think this is like a really, really cool truck. Like I said, I'm a huge tech fan. Like, I love the futuristic styling. One of my favorite things is honestly like uh, retro mod vehicles. I talk about it all the time. Like, um, there's people I follow, uh, Kaiza, if you follow car people on Instagram or stuff like that, that do renders of old cars that have been customized. Even the Ferrari, like F40 and stuff like that, cars that people consider untouchable, they'll go out and do it. And. It's, I don't know why, but 90% of them, I just, like, I love them. I don't know what it is. There's just something so cool about an old car with all these new tech features because it's this nice mixture of technology and just, like, that sleek, just, like, beauty that some of the older style muscle cars and stuff have, which I am, oh, I'm all over it. This is a little bit different in terms of, this is a very modern truck with a very futuristic style trailer on it, so a little bit different than that, but really strikes my fancy. I really do like the whole design of it. So I figured we would take it for a spin and see how it is. It is a three axle trailer. Uh, I don't know if it's a lift axle. I think one of them is. I don't remember. But we're going to go ahead and get on the highway here. And it's just going to be a simple cruise, just a chat with you guys today. Wanted to put out a driving video. I know I did just do a Scania truck video. Uh, but it just happened that they fell kind of in the same place. I do try to plan ahead now so that I can uh, get more out to you guys. I'm trying to see if I can somehow put together a schedule to where I can put out uh, two additional videos a week. Uh, obviously, I've been struggling to just keep up as it is right now just because of stuff in my personal life. But if I can do things how I want to, I'm going to be able to plan ahead, get you guys stuff every day of the week except for the weekends, and that way I'm getting as much out as I feel good doing uh, without overdoing it and I get to put out some really cool stuff and it makes my life easier in a way because it's more organized I know each week what I'm doing which is really really cool but yeah so keep an eye out for that and I will say this I want to give a massive thank you to you guys for all the support on that video I put out that skinny a truck driving simulator video expecting to really not get anything from it because I'm a small creator like I don't have like big numbers of anything which obviously like, to me the numbers don't matter but since I am serious about trying to like take this to something more than just for fun at some point you have to consider it but it's a game that's like seven or eight years old like the last people I remember posting on it were bugs and squirrel if you guys know Bay Area bugs or um, squirrel who does like he's the the master of everything truck sim in terms of ETS 2 and that sort of a thing those are the last two guys I remember posting on it. And that was like forever ago. So to see the amount of support that I got on it, all the comments and everything, like I really do appreciate it. And uh, a huge shout out to you guys. Thank you also for the support on the flashing lights video. Uh, that took a lot of time to put out and I was really, really excited to get that out. So uh, I definitely enjoyed that. I am still looking hopefully to work on some lights and stuff. If you guys do genuinely want lights for that game, like the the patterns let me know and I'll find a way to get them to you if I can that's a rather difficult one because when I do everything I try to make it so that if someone comes back to my video years down the road in the off chance that they do uh, they can still get access to that sort of a thing so I'll see what I can do make no promises I know I did mention putting it in the discord I haven't done that yet we'll see if it's wanted enough maybe I will but yeah, so speaking of tech and stuff, I want to talk about a couple of things. So if you don't follow me on stream, uh, twitch.tv slash lawnhollergmg, uh, you wouldn't have noticed. I did stream some Surviving Mars again. It's been a long time since I did that. It's been a few months. So I sat down and did some of that. And the reason I decided to do that, I want to see if I can pass this guy real quick. He's going to let me over. Thank you, sir. I do have my mirror up on the right side as well, just so I can see, just so I can focus on the forward end of things. But we're going to make it cruising past these guys. But the reason I did that is because here in the US, we just launched another mission to Mars with the Perseverance rover, and then there's also a little helicopter rover thing on board. I don't remember the name of it, it's pretty freaking cool if you ask me. Uh, but I am, you guys know this, a huge space nerd, uh, I love everything to do with it. I know not everybody is, so I apologize if this is something that doesn't appeal to you. I'm just going to talk about it anyways, because, hey, my video. <laughs> so, here we are. Uh, but yeah, so this is like something that I really just enjoy doing. And it's been quite an, an eventful week. 
Uh, so starting out, obviously they launched the mission to Mars, so that's a really big deal. And then on top of that, SpaceX brought the astronauts home, the NASA astronauts home, which is another huge deal because I believe it's the first commercial flight of astronauts ever. And then it's also the first time in like forever, I want to say since like, oh, 1985 that they landed in a capsule the way they did. Because I think other than that, it was just the shuttle program. I don't remember the dates exactly, so do forgive me. But that's honestly really cool. And then on top of that, SpaceX is still testing their Starhopper stuff. So their <laughs> giant f flying grain silo, at least that's what it looks like. They uh, did a little hop test on that, and it looked like that was successful. So that's really, really cool. So in terms of space stuff, it has been a crazy week for sure. Uh, I know I was really, really excited. I sat there. If you follow me on Twitter or anything like that, you know I was chilling in my Discord with the whole crew. And we were all watching the launch. Uh, that was obviously a huge deal for us here in the U.S. For those that are into that sort of a thing. And uh, that was really, really cool to, to get to experience. And that's the kind of stuff that, like, I remember how sad I was. You know, I was, like, 11 years old when the shuttle program ended. Like, I never really got to truly experience the shuttle program. And I got to say, like, I want to be able to, like have those stories when I get old, like, of being able to experience stuff, because we live in a, a, a time right now where you can watch pretty much every big event, even from the comfort of your own home, like, when you can't go, and that was one of the biggest things was, like, they used to, I think they televised some of the launches, but it was a lot harder back then, at least for me, in the situation I was in, to get to see anything like that. Uh, we're gonna move over. But, um, let's see if we can navigate this roundabout. <laughs> I am going a little fast, so I probably should chill it. There we go. Uh, but yeah, so like, um, the Red Bull, that, that huge jump that that guy did, um, oh, I don't remember his name, but things like that, where you get to just sit at home and experience that. Uh, the Olympics, that's another big one, like being able to see that. Although, over the years, I've become less and less interested in the Olympics. I don't know what it is. I just, like, I'm always there to support the U.S. teams, because obviously, America, but <laughs> I don't know. Something about it. It's just, like, I feel like the glory days of the Olympics are starting to go away. I want to know what you guys' thoughts are on that, because that's something that's been crossing my mind a lot lately. And obviously, with everything going on, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they go about implementing stuff like that going forward, because... I don't know. It It's a huge world thing, and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what it's going to be like going forward for the next few years. It's really, really strange to me. But yeah, so just like that whole thing, getting to experience stuff like that. I want to know how many of you guys actually watched the, uh, the shuttle launch, or not the shuttle launch, but the... Uh, actually, that's actually a good question. How many of you guys were interested in the shuttle launches and got to actually, like see them. Have any of you guys actually seen a rocket launch in person? I have yet to do that. I would really love to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm very jealous of Jeff Faviano and the fact that he gets to live down in Florida. Uh, I will say this though, with the weather this week, I don't know if I would want to live down there. Um, but that's just like, can you imagine being able to sit in your backyard and just like watch rockets go to space? Like, I don't know about like what it is. Like, that's why I love, like, Astroneer or Surviving Mars or games like that. There's just something about space travel that just gets me, dude. It's so cool. Like, I've always been a huge space nerd. I've always been, like, reading books like crazy about it, movies, stuff like that. Like, Interstellar is one of my favorite movies. It's also one of the few that I've just about actually cried at. Very, very sad movie. <laughs> There's one particular scene that, I don't know what it is, just kills me. We're going to keep driving on here. But yeah, like, I am, I just, I thought it was such a cool, oh, cool thing. We're going to be careful here. I'm going to actually go all the way over. Give him plenty of space. But yeah, so, other than that, you know, 
I don't think there's been much else going on. I do know there was a smaller company that like lost one of their rockets with like small satellites on it, which is a big rip. That sucks a lot. Uh, you know, that's probably got to be a big blow, but I think they figured out what the problem was. I don't remember what the, uh, the company was, but hopefully everything goes well there. Honestly, like I will say this, I'm very thankful I get to, uh, be a part of like these new missions to other planets. Like I know there's a lot of people, there's a lot more people than I realize that could just give two shits about it, and I get it, like, I really do. But for me, personally, like, I don't know, there's something about the idea of just space travel in general, something about the technology behind it, and just the sheer engineering that goes into it. I mean, that that's the thing, though, that's the industry, I've talked about it before, it's the industry I wanted to go into, I wanted to be an aerospace engineer. I just, I don't have the brain power for it, so now I'm making stupid videos on YouTube. <laughs> that's how I ended up here. But, I mean, that's the thing. I could talk your head off all day about rockets and stuff. It's, like, it's really cool because I've got a lot of people in my community now, too, that are very into that stuff. So, people who are kind of keeping track, it's nice because if I forget, like, oh, there's a launch this day, they'll uh, drop it in the server and let me know, which is awesome. Although, the last few times I've actually been on top of it. But if you like rockets and stuff and you want to talk about them, Discord server is a great place to go. You can find that in the description, as always. And, uh, yeah... That's just, there's so much cool stuff that goes on in there too, so definitely check that out if you're interested. But, yeah, overall, huge space nerd. Thought that stuff was really cool. I want to know what you guys' thoughts are on the, uh, the new mission to Mars. I know, I will say this, the whole, like, oh, it's our best bet yet to find life on Mars. I'm just kind of tired of the whole life on Mars thing at this point, if I'm honest. Like, I get it, but, like, at this point, you know... It feels like same old, same old. I wish we would just start saying, okay, you know, there's either life or there isn't, or it's uncertain. Let's just start making those next steps. But I guess that's probably my impatience, and that's why I'm not allowed to run these missions. <laughs> that's why I'm not allowed to uh, take part in any of them, because I would probably end up doing something really stupid. And I do, I, I want to know. I think part of it has to do with the fact of, like, obviously, we don't want to contaminate the planet with our own bacteria or our own stuff if there happens to be life on Mars. But the thing is, is if there is life on Mars, then we've pretty much got it set in stone that there's life on other planets. Like, there's potential for life on other planets, even if it's bacteria, because we started as bacteria here on Earth. At least that's where my brain lies. I try to, like, dumb everything down to my level because I am... Ooh, I do not have the smarts for this kind of stuff, but... But yeah, I want to know what you guys' thoughts are on the new rover and stuff like that. I think it's a really, really cool piece of tech, honestly. I'm very excited to see what comes of it. It's really cool, too. It kind of puts it into perspective of like, okay, we're supposed to be going to Mars ourselves, but this rover is not even going to get there for a year, I think. So that just goes to show like how long these missions are actually going to be. Like, There's going to be people in space for almost a year. Uh, <laughs> obviously, once they land on the planet, it'll be more than a year. So, we're getting close, man. We're going to probably have... Like, I would say this. In my lifetime, we're probably going to end up having... Mm, I would say we'd have astronauts on at least one more planet. Maybe the moon. Oh, what's this? We'll slow right down for this. Of course, the, uh, the blinding lights of construction always pointed straight into traffic. Because where else would they be pointed? And I will say this, you'll notice my steering is a lot smoother than scanning a truck driving simulator. And it's because something about that game, like, the wheel, I don't know what it is, but the wheel gets so stiff on there. And, I mean, I will say this though, that game holds up. That's like a seven or eight year old game, and it's still, you know... I would say it's on par with some of these newer ones that we have. I would say it's better than some of these newer ones that we have. But yeah, so that's probably enough space talk, because I could go on and on and on. I'm sure I just like blabbered about random things, kind of going back and forth. It's something I tend to do. I tend to just be kind of all over the place while I'm recording, because I have like 800 different thoughts going through my head at once, and I'm trying to like keep an eye on the road and keep her between the lines and just talk and enjoy it. 
I will say this is a really cool, just peaceful cruise too. I like this. It's also nice not having the pressure of having cargo on board. It's just me and the truck. Although I say that, and <laughs> if I needed the money, I'd probably be a little bit more under pressure. But part of the reason too, we're where we're at, is because this country is, I believe, Scania's home country. So that's why we're doing this. Although it's kind of funny because the trailer is actually a Mercedes-Benz concept. Uh, I, like I said, I did some research. The concept, it looks like it came out in 2011. Really cool concept. At the time, the the research that it said that it wasn't actually legal, that the part on the back wasn't legal yet. I think that's something that's been an issue in the U.S. too, is like those wings on the back. They've been trying to get laws changed for, stuff like that. It's weird seeing that line of a turn signal. But it's interesting to me because it mentioned like Mercedes-Benz. So if you're a Formula One fan, obviously, you know, Mercedes is a huge deal in Mercedes, or uh, in Mercedes, in Formula One. Jeez. And uh, I didn't even think about it. Like, in theory, all of that research and money that they put into their Formula One team probably comes back and is put into some of their trucks too. Like, they, their aero and stuff, like their aerodynamics and things like that, they probably use a lot of the info they get from Formula One on their semi-trucks. How strange is that? There's probably like supercar technology and race car technology in semi trucks now, which if you ask me, like that's super cool and super just strange at the same time. Like there's something about that that's just, I don't know. That's so weird to me. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, holy crap, that's pretty cool. Although I say that and I watched a Volvo video like, Volvo did this, I think it was Volvo, did this really cheesy, like, race versus a Koenigsegg. One, one, uh, I think it was one to one or one one. I don't remember what the actual name of it is. Where the whole idea was that they would do one lap and the Koenigsegg would do two laps in the same amount of time and it still beat it. It's just weird to see companies like that coming together, honestly. I mean, Red Bull and their Formula One team, they're known for doing, like, huge different things across the U.S. and out in the other country. Whoa, buddy. All right. This officer has places to be. Damn. Apparently cars can go faster on this road. But, yeah, they're, used, they're known for doing stuff like that. Like, they did that whole race with the uh, campers in the back and... Weird stuff like that. I gotta say, I really like Formula One teams and stuff, and uh, how they do their promos. It's definitely the most uppity sport in the world, but it's nice to see people like, uh, I think I've talked about it before, like Lando Norris. He's one of my favorites, honestly. Like, there's, like, I have teams that I like, and then I have drivers in particular that I like. I've always been a fan of Max Verstappen. He's not my number one. He does make some decisions sometimes that kind of bothers me, especially in his sim racing. Um, but, like, Lando Norris is probably the one that's the most connected to this industry right now, like, um, in terms of, like, he's a streamer, too. I follow him on Twitch. Like, I've always, I've enjoyed his, uh, streaming on Twitch, and he's been huge over there. But it's really cool because, like, these people get to, like, they have to miss streaming on a day because they're going to race in an actual race that you're gonna see on TV, like, there's something strange about that. Oh god, brakes. Brakes on this truck are really good. Found that one out. But it's like, it's just, it's cool too, because people who are like in the most uppity sport, like Formula One is known for like elegance and stuff like that, but it's also known for just being douchey. Like it's that rich, like I'm better than you attitude kind of sport, which I really dislike personally. But he's starting to help change that image around. Like, I still think Formula One has a long way to go in that front. I want to know, like, do any of you guys watch Formula One? And if so, like, what drivers do you like? Is there, like, any motorsports that you watch? Obviously, you guys, I know some of you uh, definitely are involved in it. Because I do iRacing and I do endurance racing over there, which we've been doing a lot of lately. We're actually taking a little bit of a break from that because everyone got overscheduled. So, I don't know if I've talked about it before. We were supposed to race a 12 hour at Barcelona. We're not going to be doing that anymore. Everything kind of keeps changing around. But we have stuff planned out for 
like the whole year, which is going to be really, really cool. I'm very excited for more. But yeah, do any of you guys, like, are you into racing? Like, what do you watch? I know I'm, I kind of watch a little bit of everything. I uh, grew up on NASCAR. Um, personally, like a truck series was one of my number ones. But I moved on to like the, um, it was the Sprint Cup series, I think. What uh, I watched a lot when I was younger, stuff like that. I'm not super well versed in any particular series. Like I know little bits of everything instead of a lot about one specific. Like I'm one of those guys. Uh, I personally, I really love World Endurance. I really love World Rally. Obviously, growing up in New England, one of the big things that goes on up here is they have the, the New England Rally, which is something I so desperately want to go experience in person sometime. I'm just, I love motorsports. I want to hear what you guys' thoughts are on it, what you guys are doing. Also, if you're in the U.S., I hope you guys are safe. I hope you guys are doing well. Obviously, we just had a hurricane slash tropical storm come through, and uh, holy crap. Uh, it's the first time I've been put on edge in a long time from a storm. That thing traveled fast. That's what I was talking about earlier with Jeff living in Florida. I think the storm actually missed Florida. Uh, it made landfall, like, in the Carolinas. It seemed like it slammed the Carolinas. And, uh, holy crap, dude. That storm moved fast. I mean, just a couple of days, and it went from the southern coast all the way up into Canada. I mean, it's in, like far northern Canada right now like past most of its like city areas and stuff like that but I know it was a very rough storm for some people uh, we have people here I have family without power in the state that I live in um, stuff like that I know it was really rough so I hope you guys are doing well hope you're safe and uh, all that stuff yeah it was definitely intense watching that I know people that I am friends with and stuff they were up from tornado warnings and stuff for quite a while one night uh that storm just seemed to like right up until the end it was just dropping tornadoes like crazy just boom 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 all the way up into like massachusetts and stuff too it was weird uh, it's been a while since i've seen anything like that and honestly like i was quite nervous for a little bit because i didn't know whether it was going to come near where i was it actually happened to miss my state uh and go into canada so uh, I was joking about that on stream, like, screw you, Canada. For once in my life, like, Nova Scotia and Maine, we almost always get, like, the last little bit. It usually arcs off. But this one, like, once it hit land, it made a beeline for, like, Quebec and Canada in general and missed Maine almost completely. A uh, little bit, like, bands of the storm hit us and stuff like that, but overall, we were relatively untouched which was really, really nice. I'm gonna step it up here and get past this guy. But yeah, so like I said, I hope you guys are safe. That was, <laughs> that was a heck of a storm that came through. It was very sudden too. I don't know if it was just me, but like, I felt like there was very little warning of it hitting. Maybe it's just because I didn't take it seriously. Like, I've been following all these storms. Like, August is hurricane season. Like, it's, it's like, this is when everything starts really going down. It's, what, April through August or something like that? But it seems to be really, really rough this year. It seems like we've gotten a lot more and a lot more sudden ones. So keep an eye out. Take that stuff seriously, especially with, like, the tornado warnings and that sort of thing because... When these storms are dropping tornadoes like they are, you're not going to get warning. Sometimes it'll be instantly. It's That's the scariest part. But uh, it was <laughs> definitely a very nasty storm. And I am very, very thankful that it missed us. I know that a lot of flooding happened. I know a lot of people weren't as fortunate. So I hope you guys are all safe. I hope it all uh, cleans up for you. Definitely glad that it did not turn into a hurricane and follow up the whole way any worse. I think the highest it got was a Category 1. And I think it hit Category 1 status just as it hit landfall, too. Like, I think it was, like, a relatively short-lived storm on that front. But, man, that thing had power all the way up the coast. I don't know, like, 
it was, um, something about it just felt so weird to me because normally I'm used to seeing them like really die off and then we just get like bands of rain and stuff from it. But it seems to me like it kind of held itself together right up until the end. I mean, it was still rotating and partially together. I'm also slowing down a little early, trying to make sure I don't miss this turn. But it was also like still rotating like partially together towards the end. Really weird. But it looks like we are coming to our destination, which is Carl Scrona. I do not know how to say it in, uh, what is this? Ah, uh, crap. I don't remember where I'm at. I don't remember the country I'm in. Sweden, right? It'd be Swedish. I think this is Sweden. I've had a complete brain fart right about now. I honestly don't know what country I'm in. <sighs> this is why I don't fly airplanes. This is it right here. So for all those people that... I, I made a joke about the fact that I wasn't looking at Microsoft Flight Simulator while I was streaming, and my Twitch chat just decided that they were going to get it for me, so... Yep, there's that one. So, I guess at some point, maybe we'll get lucky and I will do some flying, and we'll see how horrible that goes. Probably going to stick to some bush flying, sticking in more rural areas. Uh, and... Mm, maybe I'll actually have some flight content. I used to do flights, too, in Microsoft Flight Sim. P3D as well. I had P3D at one point. That was a friend of mine gave that to me. Whoop, that was weird. But we're going to make our way over here to our hotel to park for the night. And that, hopefully, will give us enough room to park. <laughs> I know these hotels tend to be rather small, so we will see. This is a very nice trailer. I really, really do like it. Uh Oh, that's our hotel entrance, isn't it? Oh, here we go. Okay. Plenty of room, hopefully. See if we can back into a spot here. Just showing off my backing skills after the uh, Scania video, just to confirm that I can actually do it. I'm not perfect, I'm sure the angle is off a bit, but that should be good enough for me. And real quick, just before I do end the video, I'll show you guys a quick walk around of what the lights look at night. So there you can see that's what the back of the trailer looks like at night. And then obviously the turn signals, very, very nice. But yeah, that's going to go ahead and that is going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.